Hello and welcome to the show. We are here today on Forza Horizon 3 with a new car to take on our Hot Wheels circuit. The Mitsubishi Eclipse is going to have a try. Now, I am not actually sure what to expect in terms of performance from this car. We have only had one all-wheel drive vehicle go around. That was the Subaru Impreza. It was a relatively good car, although it struggled with a lack of a lack of top speed, a lack of power, and a lack of, kind of overall acceleration. Now, we do have a bit more PI to play around with uh, to start with in the Eclipse. I'm not sure, because yeah, as soon as we're going to stick it on race tyres, which is what all of the cars are running on, it's going to jump us all the way up into A-Class. Uh, we are going to, while I think about it, put the uh, aero parts on. Now, there's plenty of body kit stuff. You can have a gopping face, or <laughs> plenty of options in terms of body kit. However, we are running the Forza aero parts. Oh, in fact, <laughs> there's always no question about it. There is no question about it. We are running these for the simple reason they give me downforce. And that is what we want for this course. We have seen time and time again at the Hot Wheels track, we need the grip. The grip is so important. While if you do lack top speed, uh, you can get in a little bit of trouble. If you are slow through the corners, you're in a lot worse trouble. Now, tyre width, it's going to be 255s all round on this car. I would like a bit bigger tyres, however, they're not the worst that we have had to to be dealing with. To the other handling parts, now brakes are, of course, very important. We are running the cars on race suspension, and we fired around the track. While there is a big jump, it's not sort of got a big, heavy impact like you get uh, with a dirt race. So we don't need the off-road suspension. Uh, we will be going for a full roll cage, and I think we're probably going to want full weight reduction in this car. Yeah, down to 2,770 pounds. PI-wise, we've still got a fair bit to play with, and we can focus the rest of that on power. I think we're going to want to get all of the weight out. It's still heavier than the Impreza. It's still heavier than the Impreza that went around. Now, the rules of this series is that the vehicles must run their standard engines if they can get to the top of S1 class. By the looks of it, this is going to take pretty much all of the parts, but I think it probably will make it to the top of S1. I am going, oopsie, uh, I am going to put the gearbox on quickly while I think about it because it is very, very important that uh, we have this for, actually we might, might get away. We're just going for that stage because that'll be allowed to change. It will mean we can adjust the final drive so that we can have it uh, not buzz the limiter when we hit the boost pads and it saves us four PI which will probably come in quite handy as we uh, as we are dealing with the uh, the build for this because yeah we are going to want power in the car maybe it won't get to the top of S1 class I thought it would do it I thought it would do it without too much hassle but it doesn't look like it is quite going to be able to now this could be interesting news for the eclipse here because yeah that's 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 done for that's full weight reduction and it's done for in terms of power so we will have to go for an engine so it depends on what engines we can get turbo rally engine we can get the two uh, 3.2 liter i6 or the 6.2 v8 uh, the v8 is slightly heavier but we can get some of that weight back out again with the likes of exhaust and so on uh, a lot more torque i think we're gonna have i think we're gonna go v8 in this one i think we are gonna have that uh, that 6.2 we, well, we're going to have a look what we can do with engine. I don't know if it's really necessary. I don't think it's really necessary to go for aspiration conversions. I mean, we could go and stick a supercharger uh, on it or a turbo if we so wished. In fact, uh, it's, it's, I am surprised we have this much PI to play with. I am very surprised, actually, to see this much PI available to play with here. Uh, we haven't really seen that so much with all-wheel drive cars in the past. So, yeah, we'll go with... Uh, We'll go with keeping it naturally aspirated. It is going to have a very large amount of power. We're talking 650, pretty much. 544 torque. And this could be a, a serious contender. If this has got the grip, if this has got the grip to get through the corners fast enough, we could really see this challenge the very, very top of the table. Now, what I'm doing with these parts, I'm trying to get as many different ones on as we can within the uh, within the PI. So, oh, we could we can get that stage there on as well. We will. Uh, so, yeah, that's why we kind of, I'm not quite going for the top tiers to initially begin with. I don't think we'll get the uh, top tier flow. Well, no, that will jump us up into uh, S2. Uh, one other thing that we will look at is bonnet, because these can be slightly lighter, but the six pounds that that saves will tip it over into S2 as well. 
So it is going to uh, run like this. A 7 liter V8 in our <laughs> Eclipse. 650 horsepower is what the car is going to be producing. I wasn't expecting that much power. Uh, as I said, if we have the grip, this might be a mighty fast car. So our Eclipse is ready for its five laps around the skyscraper takeoff circuit. The time to try and beat is a 134.7 set by the Honda NSX. Is it possible? I, I don't really know. There is very little in the way of uh, compar comparable cars in many ways to this Eclipse. The Impreza being the only one. That was a 136.3, although I do expect the Eclipse to be faster. It has got similar sized tyres to the Impreza. It does weigh a little bit more, about 100 pounds heavier. Uh, however, it has got far, far more power. Although, judging by the feels of it, a lot more in the way of understeer. The yeah, front end does not really get turned in that well to some of these corners. I suspect this turn here is going to be not very fun. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> That's a little bit, that's asking a little bit too much of the car through uh, through that section. Yeah, try and not drive it like the Lotus or the NSX or anything like that, because we're going to have more straight line speed than those cars. I bloody well hope we have more straight line speed than, uh, than those cars, because that's where we're going to have to make up our time. We are not going to be able to live with them through the corners. Our acceleration, though, will be good, and by being all-wheel drive, Thankfully, none of our almost 700 horsepower is wasted. It all gets down onto the road pretty damn efficiently. What are we going to be doing in terms of actual straight line speed here? Will be interesting to know. We're a little bit wonky. Oh, we had a wiggle at 210 miles an hour on a Hot Wheels track, but we got away with it. We just got away with it. That very, very nearly went massively wrong. 219 miles an hour. A little early on the brakes, actually, for that final corner. I wasn't sure because there was such a huge amount of speed going on there. Another 36. We're already a tenth of the Impreza's time, and that was from a standing start with this car. That's quite impressive. <laughs> That's very impressive, actually, from the Eclipse. Admittedly, there isn't the biggest of gains uh, from a flying lap here, seeing as you slow down so massively on the uh, the final turn. You also, oh, not going to be able to do that, uh, you also will get a smaller gain, of course, with an all-wheel drive car, because these things will launch so much better than their uh, rear-wheel drive. Oh, got competitors, as again, struggling with that turn. I'm not sure which way is, uh, is better to go, because we saw with the Civic Type R, with the way that thing was understeering, uh, through the uphill section, taking a tight line really wasn't an option. And this is kind of uh, almost comparable levels of understeer. Not quite, but it's still very, very difficult to get that front end to do what you want. The downside of being forced to take the uh, initial wider line is that in the next corner becomes a very nasty bugger for a car that's struggling with understeer. So both of their advantages shall we say and i'm not sure which way round it's going to be with the uh, with the eclipse here oh we're in trouble now we're not going to save that one. Oh no we are <laughs> lost all of our speed how the hell is this car still pointing in the right direction i don't know that is the most out of shape anything has ever been at that part of the track and we got away with it that's some impressive levels of grip right there with the Eclipse. It's not going to be a quicker lap time, that is very true. Um, and that's understandable. We lost a huge amount of speed there. Still, that is a uh, mighty, mighty fine performance. Uh, or, or demonstration, shall we say, in the uh, levels of grip this car has. Right, and I used about as much of the road as I could comfortably there. And uh, we all got away with it nicely. Let's try taking this smoother line for the latter part of the course. It might be this hill here that actually gives the car a bit more trouble. Uh, we're having trouble with the uh, Hellcat over that part as well, over that crest, just catching the understeer a little bit, unfortunately. We'll throw the car in with some serious, serious speed in the uh, next section. How late dare we break? Trying to get these uh, stopping, he's trying to get the stopping, the braking zones sorted for this section. Is the really, um, is this really tough part? I talked about it a little bit with, with the Lotus. This car is slightly better. I say slightly better. You're basically braking at the 
change in road surface. That's where you've got to be going with this vehicle because we're going much faster and much heavier than the likes of the Lotus. But there's still just that little bit of leeway. You can just get it a little bit later if uh, everything is going spot on. And uh, just trying to find that, that millisecond that you can get away with not getting on the brakes. And then not, uh, it's the difference between having a very, very fast line and ending up in the wall. Likewise, down here, we've got a good run uh, around the sort of big loop. Not the best, down to a 35 point. Four. Uh, that's a good that's a good lap time we're still some way off that NSX got a couple of laps to try and make up about eight tenths of a second where might we find it I don't know there's that understeer is creeping in we've got away with it all around that uh, corner now we're, we're gonna try to try going this route here we'll see <laughs> I'm not really sure because yeah, both of these routes have got their advantages and their disadvantages for this car. I'm sure if you've got the grip to be flat out the whole way. I don't know if it's got the grip through there. I need to be a I need to slow down a lot more through the uh, the exit corner there. Hmm. Now I'm not going to really have much comparison information to uh, go on because this lap here is likely to be a little bit on the uh, the scruffy side. It's a shame that we don't have a last lap time on our telemetry or on our kind of race information. I kind of miss having that feature, so it's a useful one to know at times, rather than just having your your best lap and sort of current one. Now, are we going to be able to get a mega boost off of this? Potentially, if we get everything spot on, land and kind of bounce back up. This is a better run, 207 miles an hour up the hill. This is where it really shows where the Lotus struggled. We don't dip below 190 on a good run with the Eclipse. I know the uh, Lotus was down in about the, uh, the 170 miles an hour, and that's a big chunk of speed lost. While it gets propelled up to the other uh, speed, oh, we're at 34.8, we've only got a tenth to go. Okay, one tenth is what we need in the Eclipse. I wasn't quite prepared for that lap time. It was a, uh, it was a good lap that time around. Don't let the understeer catch you out too much. Oh. <laughs> We are pushing our luck, something chronic in this car. We're going to stick with uh, heading out this way, I think. If we can just be a little bit earlier on the brakes through this corner here. A little bit more on the brakes, perhaps. Oh, I, just, I don't like that turn. I really don't like that turn coming from that angle. It's so... I thought we were going to be okay with it that time around, and it's still not quite enough to make the corner. It might, we might still be able to find the time through the rest of the lap because we've got that mega, mega straight line speeds to finish with. Decent brakes, brilliant traction, so none of the acceleration is wasted out of the final corner or out of the uh, crossover section. All right, try and get all the power as soon as possible down here. Now, let's not have an issue on the landing. Let's not get bounced around. I might have gone to fifth a little too soon. We might have shrugged off a little bit of excess speed. Oh, it's a couple of miles an hour down that time around. Just a smidge slower. I'm not sure we're going to go. I'm not sure we're going to improve this time around. I'll give it everything into the final corner as we uh, try fight. Get the eclipse slowed as we have got it. Actually slowed very, very neatly. The run to the line. Oh, it's quick. It's a tenth faster. Is it quick enough? It is. It is indeed fast enough to go to the top of the table, but only just. <laughs> only, only just. It is three hundredths of a second faster than the NSX. I had, uh, yeah, I, I did think when we saw the stats on this car, it might be a very, very capable vehicle. Not the easiest of cars to drive. Not the easiest of cars to drive around here. We do struggle with some understeer. In all honesty, the NSX is a much nicer car to take around this circuit. The Porsche is a nicer car to drive around here. However, the Eclipse has got the it has got the speed for that final loop. I have no doubt we are uh, down on the 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 lap time, if you like, of the NSX and the Porsche up until that point. I have no doubt we are down on it. However. This car is able to stay close enough that when it does come to the boost pads, when it comes to that outright top speed, I mean, we're always getting 220 out of this, which is not far off what the twin mill was doing. So, yeah, it is a mighty performance indeed from the Eclipse to put it to the top of the table.
but only by tiny amounts. It displaces the NSX down to second. The Civic Type R and 911 GT2 are now a joint third place. The uh, Alfa Romeo uh, down in two fourth. Uh, sorry, in, into fifth. Yeah, it's it's a nice car. It's a nice car. Very very quick. Often all-wheel drive cars can get in trouble with the uh, the Forza PI system. Sometimes they get a little bit hard done by. Not so much the case with uh, with this one. It is our first leader in this series to be all-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive and front-wheel drive. We claimed it at various different times. We now have an all-wheel drive car leading the table. That, though, is going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, uh, goodbye.